In the last videos in this video series on Python for Network Engineers, we covered some extremely important topics. I'd highly recommend going ahead and checking those out. Now, in today's video, I'd like to talk about where to write the Python code and how to write the Python code. Now, you can literally just go ahead and start CMD, the command prompt, and start with it. Idle, start with it. Uh, Sublime text editor or any other text editor. Basically, you can go ahead and use any text editor and it can become a Python programming environment. Why is that? Well, that is because Python is a scripted language. It uses an interpreter. It, it is an interpreted language. All right, so before we go ahead and jump into any of that, let me just quickly go ahead and show you a couple of online shells with which you can just quickly get a taste of Python. The first one is on python.org itself, which is powered by Python Anywhere. Now, I'm gonna show it to you. Once you go to python.org here, you'll find this button that talks about, well, basically this is talk about. If you go ahead and click on this, it'll launch the interactive shell, which I'm gonna show you right now. So if I go ahead and hover over it, it says launch interactive shell. And if I go ahead and click on it, it'll also going to tell, it's also going to tell you that it's powered by Python Anywhere. And you can go to pythonanywhere.com and, you know, basically go ahead and create a beginner's account from there and do the same stuff from there. Now, here we are, and this is the interactive shell. How do you understand it's an interactive shell? By these three greater than uh, symbols that you see. I'm gonna show this to you from idle as well as from uh, uh, the CMD as well. So uh, as an example, if I go ahead and I wanna print uh, the network Viking, right? The network Viking, how do I ask Python to go ahead and do it? Well, this is how you do it in Python 3.x. Go ahead and hit enter and voila, it was able to print it out for me. So this is one of the examples and the other one, I wanted to talk about is repl.it. If I just go ahead and paste it in there, you can do the same stuff from there. Sign up, log in, and go ahead and do it. Now, we're going to go ahead and jump into command prompt, and then I'm going to show you idle and other stuff. So let's jump right into it. Now, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, I'd highly appreciate if you go ahead and kindly consider doing that. Thank you. All right, so here we have the command prompt on the left-hand side, and we got the idle shell on the right-hand side. The idle is the integrated development and learning environment. It comes bundled up with Python. And as you can see right now, this uh, says that Python is in the REPL mode, which is known as the interactive mode, REPL mode, these three greater than symbols, right? Which is reading the input from the user and then evaluating that input and then printing the results or the errors that the user might get and then repeating those uh, things again, uh, like waiting for the user to provide another input and then reading that, evaluating that, and then printing that again. So this is usually uh, used for one-liners. So when you talk about the interactive mode, for example, it works like a simple calculator as well here. Two plus two, four, three minus three, zero. And you can also do assignments to variables. Don't worry, I'm gonna talk more about variables. So let's say L as in length, right? L-E-N-G-T-H, let's say length equals to 20, right? And I say breadth, breadth, I hope I got that right equals to 20 or let's say 30 all right and then i know that area is equal to length into breadth right i hit enter and now here what do you see we see here with the length we're assigning the value of 20 to length and then we're assigning the value of 30 to breadth right and then we're making sure that a length into breadth like length multiplied by breadth gets stored in area. So whatever's on the right-hand side of this equal to symbol gets stored in uh, the variable on the left-hand side of this equal to symbol, right? So length into breadth, the result will be stored in area. Now, if I want to print area, I can just say area, hit enter, and it says, oh, it's 600. Or I can print it like this. I can say area. That's it right, 600. Now, um, 
as I said, it's used for usually used for one-liners, but you can write multiple lines of code in this as well. I can run for loops and so on. However, when you have hundreds and thousands uh, of lines of code that you want to write, you don't you're not going to go ahead and do it in the interactive shell, right? You will go to the scripting mode. Then I'm going to show that to you. Uh, after this, now before that, let me show you how to uh, go to the interactive mode from Python and what's really going on there. All right. All right. In order to do it from uh, the command prompt, type Python, hit enter. You see, we successfully landed in the interactive mode. Now, in case you face any errors here, it could be that you have a messed up path variable or Python might not have been successfully installed. Um, in that case, uh, you may want to go ahead and check out my previous videos where I've explained that in detail. Now here, again, we are in the interactive mode, the REPL mode. We can do the same stuff that we checked in the idle as well. Gives me the result while, uh, without a problem. Now I want to show you how to write a loop in there. Do not worry because I'm going to explain uh, loops in a separate video in great detail. So I would like a for loop, I would write a for loop like that. And indentation is extremely important in Python. That's why I press the tab key. According to the PEP8 styling, uh, you would um, uh, type four spaces. I'm not a big fan of four spaces. And therefore what I do is I press the tab key and be done with it. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and print I, hit enter, and that's it. It prints uh, from a zero till nine, but does not include the limit. If you want to go ahead and try to figure it out yourself, please go ahead and do that. Pause the video and try to figure it out. I'm going to anyways explain it in great detail in a separate video and in the upcoming examples as well that we cover in this course. All right, to exit out of the interactive mode, uh, type exit and then uh, you know, the opening and the closing parentheses. Hit enter and that's it. You're out of the directive mode. Now let's go ahead and check out what the scripting mode is, how to do stuff from there. All right, as I've mentioned before, Python is a scripted language and you can use any text editor to write the Python code. And in this case, I'm using the Sublime Text Editor, one of my favorites for um, anything related to text. But if you, um, as I mentioned before, uh, among the Python programmers, Atom or Visual Studio Code is very famous. You get those, you know, the useful plugins, those hints and all that in there. So for me, um, I'm able to get my job done with a Sublime Text Editor and therefore I'm going for it. Now, let me show you a quick example here. So length is equal to 20. Again, L is a variable name. So uh, I can give it whatever name I want as long as I do not uh, break the rules uh, given by Python for a variable naming. Right, so breadth is equal to 30, and then I can say area is equal to length into breadth, and then I'm going to go ahead and say print, print what the area that's it. I can do a control S now to go ahead and save this with the dot py extension. All right, when I press control S, okay, now I'm going to say area of a rectangle dot pi. That's it. I save it. You see the color change and everything. It's able to understand the Python code. If I do a control plus shift plus a B, B as in Bravo, I'll be able to run it in the Sublime Text Editor itself with uh, the answer given right here, which is 600. If, however, um, there's a problem in my code, I give, it, for example, let me make a simple mistake here. Instead of area, I type A-R-E in the print function, right? And let me do the same thing again. Control S to save it. Control Shift and then a B as in Bravo. And run Python. It's going to throw me an error saying that name R is not defined. Did you mean area? Oh, yeah, I did. So I can do something like this and do a Control S to save it. And then Control Shift V. And select Python and there you go it gives me 600 right as I mentioned before this is how you print out the values of the variable and if you want to print out the string area itself then this is how you do it you put it in the inverted commas either a single inverted comma or a double inverted comma both would work fine control shift and then B selecting Python here and says area right here right and I can do stuff like this as well I can say area 
of uh, the rectangle equals to, and then I'm going to use uh, the F string to get it done for me and say area here and use the F string right here at the beginning. And uh, I should be able to get a beautiful output now. Control S to save it and cancel. Yeah, it's free. Control Shift and then B and then selecting Python area of the rectangle equals to 600. Beautiful, right? So, um, so I guess this is uh, something I wanted to cover uh, because uh, this is something I use a lot when it comes to dealing with quick programs that I want to run with the, uh, for example, the Cisco ESA or the Cisco switches. I do that a lot. And uh, yeah, however, I'm not going to go into much detail of a lot of things. Uh, because as I said, I am uh, really focused towards the network engineers uh, for this one. However, this was extremely important uh, because uh, we need to make sure that we understand how to assign va values to a variable. And then we need to know about loops as well that I'm going to cover. Not a problem. I'm going to talk about uh, the functions as well and all the other things. So uh, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe uh, to learn about Python um, email security in Cisco's. Uh, using the Cisco ESA, um, Cisco uh, Secure Access, uh, Linux, uh, Wireshark, and so on. So have a great time ahead, and thank you for watching the video. You have a great day. Goodbye.